Today we're gonna go through how to file for your taxes as an employee working for another company. Now, the first thing you should know is that you're gonna be filing the W-4, okay? That is the form you're gonna need. And secondarily, you also wanna make sure that you're not having too many allowances uh, really taken out or maybe not enough uh, supplied to what you want taken out of your taxes, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to figure out what allowances you need to have come out. So the first thing you should know is you're gonna need a form that's called uh, Publication 15T, okay? Uh, they come out with one every single year, so each year um, they probably will release them somewhere around the end of the year for the upcoming following year. Uh, and inside of this form, there are small adjustments, but the pages are just about the same, so you don't have to worry about bouncing around from page to page. Uh, here's what you wanna look for, though. So the first thing, because uh, there's a lot of pages, is you want to look for page 10. Page 10 is going to give you the tax brackets and how to determine what someone's tax bracket is based off of their current wages. And that will go off their gross monthly wages first. Uh, and then you can kind of determine what tax bracket they fall underneath. Now, as an employer, not so important for you. But as an employee, that is important to know what your tax bracket is. Um, the second thing is going to be pages 18 through 20. Now, pages 18, I'm sorry, 18 through 20 are the methods table. And what these do is they basically are showing you how much should actually be withheld out of someone's taxes based off of a few things. One is how they're filing. That could be married, single, or head of household. The second thing is how often they're paid. So that could be you know daily, weekly, monthly, semi-monthly, um, and there's a lot of different ways, but it's all listed inside of this form. So it's particular to how often they're paid how they file and their wages, okay? Once you find exactly where they fall, and you'll see on these forms, uh, right now I have one up that you can kind of look at, but um, it'll say off to the left what their wages are and it gives you at least or not more than, right? So you're trying to find their income that falls between those two numbers. You don't necessarily have to find one exactly to match which, what the income is. But as long as it falls between those two numbers, it basically gives you a line that you can kind of follow and it'll tell you uh, different things. The first one when it comes to the um, the how much taxes should be withheld. As you go across, it's gonna base it based off of whether they're married, head of household, or single, okay? The second line that you're gonna follow all the way across is gonna be in pages 39 to 44, which are dealing with the allowances. So the first thing you wanna know, know is what is their tax, uh, what are they gonna be taxed? What, what bracket do they fall under? After we know that, we then wanna know what are they actually expecting from them to pay in taxes, okay? That number is very important because when we look at the allowances page, it's going to give us options, okay? Now, allowances have nothing to do with dependents, okay? So you, most people will fill out their W-4 and they'll say, well, I have two kids or I have, you know, a spouse or whatever, and they fill it out based off of their dependents. That has nothing to do with one another. What this actually has to do with is how much money they're going to take out of that person's check. So here's what you have. When you go to the allowances page, it's going to start at zero and it's going to go all the way to 10. All right. Now, as you notice, zero will have a higher dollar amount normally and 10 will have a lower amount. Now, based off income, sometimes it's going to be zero across the board. And that just means that there's no taxes taken out. OK, because they don't make enough for them to be really taking taxes like that. Now, once we determine what the actual tax withholding amount is, and we're going to use the number 50 for this example. So if we know that it's $50, it's what they're supposed to pay in taxes and their allowances range from, let's say, $90 to ten dollars being that 90 would be zero and 10 would be the the uh, the, the ten dollar amount what we want to do is we want to get as close to that 50 but we don't want to go under okay going under would put your your person or put yourself in a position where now you're gonna be owing taxes at the end of the year nobody wants to owe Uncle Sam so what you really want to do is stay as close to that number as possible and sometimes based off of the allowances and what you make you'll be able to get closer or not, okay? Sometimes it'll be a few dollars, sometimes maybe $20 more. Ultimately, you wanna stay on the more side. The reason why is because it's gonna put you in a position where you won't owe at the end of the year and they'll still have somewhat of a tax return. Obviously, the, the smaller the gap, the smaller the tax return, the larger the gap, the larger the tax return. Um, but this would allow someone to get a lot more money in their check so they can use it for bills, they can use it for saving, they can use it for debts, they can use it for whatever they need uh, throughout the year. Now, you will know that some people are, are hip to this and they say, well, I want to change it at this time of the year and I want to change it at that time of the year. Legally, they're allowed to do that. They just have to refile uh, a W-4. Um, and the other side of that is in doing it that way, it can be a little risky. My suggestion as an employer would be to 
understand what they need to be set at and suggest it to them, tell them the differences it would make, and encourage them to stay a little bit over but not go for the bouncing around throughout the year because it puts a little bit more hassle on yourself as well as them to remember to do that. Um, now, once you have everything figured out, the information on their uh, W-4 is pretty simple to, to, to fill out based off of just what their income is, what allowances they're gonna choose, um, and their wages and whatnot should already be listed. Uh, and there's, it's pretty simple beyond that point. Now, I would still suggest that have your staff talk to their tax person or whatnot, um, just to, for your own personal backing and, and to make them feel more comfortable. But ultimately, that's all you have to do to, to really get them together.